about Terrence Crawford versus Jeff Horn? What do you think? Terrence Crawford, Jeff Horn. Terrence Crawford's going, going, he might stay right handed the whole fight. Who knows? But if we already know if he switches left handed, it's a wrap. I see that jab coming out. Like I said, I haven't really seen Jeff Horn only that only that one fight against Manny Pacquiao, so I'm not really too up to date on Jeff Horn. But I see TC just outboxing him. And if he wants to make it a fight, he's going to outbrawl him too. That boy loves to fight. Do you think Jeff Horn's rugged style gives him a problem? Do you think Crawford would be able he to might, do he it? Might, I think Crawford's seen it all. He might just adjust to it mid, in, in mid-round and really? just completely capitalize over it. Do you think the headbutts, the elbows, the, the rough housing, you don't think that would give uh, a pure boxer like Crawford issues? Uh, for, for the time being, but knowing Crawford's, his, his grit, he's going to switch that all around. He's, he might just welcome that. I'm like, all right, we're going to make it that type of a night. Like I said, that, that man loves to fight. He enjoys it. He's one of the, he's one of the few, that, few boxers that really doesn't mind brawling with you if he has to. So Crawford beats Jeff Horn. Mm -hmm. Does that solidify his position at 147? Or does he need to fight another mm -hmm. top person at 147 before we can say he's arrived and he's a bona fide welterweight? I think, I think he needs one more person, not just Jeff Horn. Jeff Horn is a nice, like I said, that would be not, not knocking Jeff Horn. He did a great performance against Manny Pacquiao, but it's still, he still needs a, that would be, that would be, he needs a step up fight. I think, I don't, I don't consider Jeff Horn an elite fighter just yet. If he beats Crawford, it might be Jeff Horn's time has arrived. If there was one person at welterweight that Crawford could fight that would make him or solidify his position at 147, who would it be? One victory, if you could just pick one name, he beats this guy, you say, you know what? He's the king of 147. I think he's, I think he's done that just with the, big, the, the performance he had with Victor, Victor Postel and, uh, and damn, what's I forget his name. Uh, Juan Molina. Juan Molina. After he, what he's done to those two fighters, he's completely shut them down. But to bring them to I mean, what at forty seven? Forty seven. Yeah. We would have to see him against. We already know the truth. We got to see him against Earl Spence. Free smoke. Yeah. See him against Earl Spence. Say he fights Errol Spence, would it benefit him more to fight in a conventional stance or a southpaw stance? I go with the southpaw stance off rip, but just to see it'd be two two southpaws in there at the same time. Let's I I'd, I'd like to see southpaw versus southpaw. Just just my opinion. Why do you say the southpaw stance? Southpaw stance. He's rangier. We know we know uh we know Spence is it. Has his style, he ranges back, he sits, he'll look for his shots. But shit. TC, he tends to just paw with it, paw with it, and wait, wait for you to reach in to collapse in on him so he can just counter off. Once he counter off, he feel he gets comfortable with that counter, he starts stepping it up. Now he starts getting more more creative with it. He'll start showing you one thing, manipulating his hands, going to the body a lot, shooting from the body, shooting up. So it'd be it'd be it'd be more of a it's a chess match on that one. Who's what position what to for the later rounds, huh?